Hey gang, I thought I'd touch base with you on the shield and shields and swords system. Uh, I just made a quick little copy of all the the entire ch set of rules. It was basically one page. Uh, you can consolidate it all down. Once you pull the these class modifiers and, and add them to the chart, which is what I did. Now, when you play this game, it's real straightforward. You get uh, a handful of chits to choose uh, what your action is going to be in a given turn. And so in this particular turn, we chose to do combat. And we chose to uh, do what's called a double phase, which means we get to uh, conduct two of whatever it is we chose. So I chose combat. If I had to chose move, I, I would have got a double move. All right. If I don't choose this, then we just do one combat, one round of combat, or one move, as the case may be. So uh, I picked combat, and uh, the prior turn we'd moved up. Prior turn, these guys had put themselves into shield mode, shield wall mode, and then uh, we're now going to do the combat. And so it's real straightforward. Uh, this is a B class unit. These are A class and B class units. And these three units are going to attack this guy. Uh, this guy's a little extraneous, but it doesn't matter. So we rolled a two for this chap's uh, combat. But what we're going to do is look up on the, the little uh, unit type modifier, and we see that it's going to be infantry versus Vikings. That's going to give us a zero uh, on the on the uh, adjustments to class. So no effect there. But we're also but we're going to lose a set a step uh, for the enemy shield wall. So that will drop us down a class from A down to B. And then because we're actually doing a double uh, combat and I'm going to use the pitched battle idea, that's this concept of a pitched battle, that bumps me up a class. So I get puts me back up to A. So the net result of all that is that we get a defender retreat result. Um, and uh, let's see, I would, uh, because I have an extra unit of the same class, I have two A class units, I would drop down uh, one and uh, get a DRM of one, which would still leave me as a defender uh, retreat. But because it's a shield wall, of course, there is no retreat. You ignore those. And so that uh, combat, in effect, is no effect. So we'll take that die off. And the same thing basically happened here. And the same thing happened uh, here. And we get across to this combat, and that was an A versus a B. Uh, well, it's actually infantry versus Vikings, so it's a zero changes. Um, and then we look at that, and that was also no effect. Now, the last one uh, was a little more complicated. I rolled a six on this. And we get to subtract one because we had additional units uh, involved in the combat. There were one, two, three units. So I actually got to add plus two. Uh, sorry, I get to subtract two from the die roll, which dropped us down to a four. And a four on that is an exchange. And so both sides lose a step. We'll actually face this way. Just So that would be a round of combat, and you're done. You roll uh, a die for each one, resolve them in any order you want, and away you go. And so that would be the end of that action phase for that turn. We would then go to the initiative phase where if I wanted to uh, not hand, if I wanted to hand this over to the opposing player and have another turn, uh, I could do so. I'm not going to do that in this instance. And then we take my uh, chits back and put them in my little pool to be used. And we go from there, and then it becomes the um, the opposing player's turn. And uh, this is probably going to come off now because I need to allocate what I want to do. And then we'll work out whether we want to move a combat shield wall or whatever the case may be with these guys. So that's a quick little look at uh, how basically how the system works. It really all just revolves around uh, two tables and a couple of DRMs or class, modif class modifiers. Very straightforward. Everybody moves three movement points. Unless you're on a road, you move four movement points. And uh, in this particular battle, of course, you can only cross at the bridge or at the uh, ford over here. 
and uh, only these guys can cross over the fort. There's some nice little rules that kind of reflect what happened with the leadership deaths that went on during the battle. And as the time progresses and, and losses are accumulated, different leaders take control. It's assumed that other leaders were killed. And then uh, that affects the command chits for, uh, for the for one of the sides. And so we'll go go at it from there and we'll see what happens later on. Later.